G'day. In this video, we're going to learn how to dim the stimulus. What we've done with our Yilmaz and Meister stimulus, which was a circle, is we've changed things like the size, we've changed things like the color, we've probably changed things like, we could change things like the, um, the position, so we could move it around the screen. What we're going to do now is we're going to look, figure out how to dim the stimulus. Now, one way that we could think about dimming the stimulus is changing the contrast. So if we have the background, and so we'll use this terminal here as the background color, for instance. What we would do is we'd set that to black, and then the stimulus, which would be like a foreground color, would set that as, say, a white, and so you'd see a white on black. And then as we present that stimulus, or as we update the stimulus parameters, what we would do is we would somehow change the value of that foreground color from white, or from yeah, from white to the background color, from foreground down to background color. And we would update those values every single time we iterated in that loop. So if we have a look here, <coughs> there's a couple of ways that we can do that. So what we've got here is we've got just our standard from Psycho PsychoPy import core visual and event. Now we don't need event, that was a previous version that I had before just to debug this program. So core and visual, and I've also imported the OS library because what I'm going to do at the start is os.system. And remember that clears the terminal output. Now, if you haven't seen the other videos, um, <coughs> excuse me, then this may not make sense to you, but essentially what we're doing is we're presenting or we're writing to the system CLS if the name of the operating system is NT or a Windows machine. If it's not a Windows machine, then we'll pass it clear. And that should clear the output of our command prompt, our PowerShell, or our Linux bash terminal, whatever. <coughs> what I'm doing here is I'm just declaring an initial uh, initial variable, and this will make sense later on in the in the program. And what we do is we create our window. So this is just just a debugging program. So it's not going to be full size. It's not going to be everything you know as what you would do for your experiment. So we've got a 600 by 600 window. Now remember, I've got two monitors here. I'm actually running on a Macintosh, a MacBook Air at the moment. So I've got another screen just here, and I've got my main laptop here. This has the webcam, so this is going to be screen zero, but I'm actually presenting everything on this other window here, and that's screen one. I haven't got any lookup tables or any gamma calibration, and so I haven't linearized my monitor, and this is going to be something that if you are really worrying about the output of your monitor, you will need to create the gamma functions to calculate the linearization of your monitor. And we're starting off with a 000, zero, zero monitor, okay? <coughs> Sorry, yeah, with a 000, zero, zero background. So that's going to be a mid gray. We're allowing GUI and we're allowing full screen. Uh, sorry, we're turning off full screen and we're going to create units of pixels. Onto that window, we're going to create a just a small, um, just a small um, circle. It's going to be in the middle. And you'll see here we've got the line color and the fill color. They've both been set to the initial color, and we've set that to one. So this is essentially like writing. If I if I put this in in you know comment here, so the line color is essentially remember it takes three values: a red value, a green value, and a blue value. Oops, a green value and a blue value. And so what we're essentially doing is we're turning that into a one one one. Okay, so every time that we um, put into this list that the initial color, we're essentially creating, we're calling up this valuable and then we're passing it into that position. And we're going to use this to our advantage later on when we actually update the stimulus parameter. So we've got a list of values here. Okay, now remember this guy goes between minus one, which is going to be black, or actually it's going to be nothing, no, no, no strength in that channel, okay, from minus one to plus one, and it's going to be 100% strength, so to speak, okay. And so what we know here is that by setting this as one, 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 we're at maximum red, maximum green, maximum blue, so that's going to be white. That's the line color, so that's the circle, so that's the line around the outside of the circle. We also know we have fill color here, and that's going to be the solid, the interior color. And so they've both been set to white. And remember, we're approximating that circle by taking an n-sod polygon. We're giving it 128 edges, so it's a pretty, it's a circle. Okay. 
If we had that as three edges, remember that would give us the triangle. Four edges would give us the square, five inches, and so forth. So we've got a 128 sided polygon. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just saying, all right, I'm going to print out onto the terminal display stimulus. So now I know roughly where in the program I'm running, just in case it breaks down. I'm not sure exactly what's, you know, what's happened. And then what we've got here is we've got our first for loop. Now remember we're going this we use this outer for loop because remember we've got this inner for loop here. This outer for loop is just telling us how many times we're going to present the stimulus. So it's going to give us 10 stimulus. And then I'm just saying, okay, well, I'm going to dim the stimulus now. So here's our options. We've got option one and option two. So I'll take you through both options. So remember in the yield mats, or remember the way that we created the, the um, looming stimulus is we basically split it up into three different components. We had an expansion phase, we had a hold phase, and then we had a turn off phase. And what we were able to do was to calculate the frame rate of the monitor and then calculate the number of frames we would need to present okay, for that duration of time. And so the way that and so the benefit of that was every time we presented a new frame, we were able to increase the size by a certain amount, the radius by a certain amount, and then that would give us that increasing diameter. What we're going to do now is we're going to leave the radius unchanged, so it's going to be fixed at 50, but every time we update the screen now, what we're going to do is we're going to change the color, both the fill color and the line color. So what we've got, remember right up the top here we've created our initial color and we said we want to start off at white. Now if we think about what dimming is, dimming is basically turning down or reducing the strength of the red, green and blue channels until a certain point that the values are the same as the background value, for instance. <coughs> so if we started off at zero, zero, zero is our background color, and we, all right, and we started off at one, one, one with our white, our stimulus, what we want to do every time we update the screen is to reduce the value of the foreground color until such stage as it becomes the same as the background color. And so I'm over, I'm overshooting here, okay, and we'll we'll see what that means, but the point should still come through, okay? So what we're saying is we want to dim, or we want to change the value of our stimulus over 15 frames. Now remember, if your monitor's at 60, if it's a 60 hertz monitor, 60 hertz, so every 60 frames is one second. So for 15 frames is 15 on 60, and that's a quarter. I'd say that's going to be for over a quarter of a second. We're going to be dimming our stimulus, so that's quite quick. So what we do is we basically say, all right, what we want is we want to create a new color variable. And so we're taking our initial color, so that's initially going to be one. And then from that, we're going to subtract the numbers of the, the iterator, i, times the decrement value. So this is by how much each frame you want to reduce down your, um, your color. All right. So in this case, we're going down by 0 0.1. And then we're just rounding this value to 2, just to make it nice and easy for us to see. And then we're printing this out. Okay. So we're creating a new color for every frame. Okay, so if we think through the maths here, so we start off this for loop at zero. So this will be zero. This i iterator passes into here. Zero times 0 0.1, well that's zero. And so the initial color, which remember is one, minus zero is going to be one. So we start off at our initial color. And then once we've created that new color, we then pass it into the red, the green, and the blue channel and for, for the fill color and also for the line color, one, 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 for the very first frame. We then draw it onto the screen and then we flip it. Now I'm caught up waiting here just to slow it down so you can see what's going on. And then once we've done this, we then come back up to the top of this for loop. It, it, this I increments to one now. And so this one now passes into here. And so now we've got the new color is going to equal the initial color, which is one minus 1 times 0 0.1, so that's going to be minus 0 0.1, because 1 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.1, and so now it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.1, so that is now 0 0.9, and we're going to print that out, and then now we create, we change the parameters of our fill color to 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9.
for the fill and the line color. So you see how now we're changing all three values. We've dropped them by 0 0.1. Okay, so that's the decrement value. And then we will draw it onto the screen. Sorry, draw it into memory and then flip it onto the screen. Okay. And then we'll wait. And then you can see what we're doing here. We have then, this now becomes 2. And so therefore, 2 times 0 0.1. That will be 0 0.2 now. So 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8. And then we pass that new color into our list of fill color and line color. And so therefore now the second time we update the, the um, screen, it's now 0 0.8. Okay. <clears throat> so let's run this program. So just make sure I've got the blue circle up there. So I just want to save that. We'll run this program. And we should see it start off at white and then it should dim. Okay. And it should be relatively slow there. So you can see it's dimming down there. So it starts off at white. It then goes to uh, grey, and then it's actually going further. Like I said before, we've overshot it because I haven't calibrated um, the foreground and the background colour. I'm just showing you um, by how much it's going to... Sorry, I'm just showing you the process of how to dim it. What you would do is if you wanted to dim it equally over, say, 15 frames, you would calculate the difference in value between your foreground, your start foreground colour, and your background colour. So if you start... If your background is 0, 0, 0, okay, so what's the difference? So the difference uh, in colour, well, that's going to be foreground minus background. And so in this case, it will be uh, 1. We had a foreground colour of 1 minus our background color is zero. And so therefore we've got a total total difference of one, one unit, it's meaningless here. And if you want to change that over 15 frames, then um, change per frame equals one divided by 15. Because remember you want to change by that value and you want to change it to 50, uh, over 15 frames. And so therefore that would be your decrement value, your change per frame. And then that value here, change per frame, would then go into here. Well, actually, we can probably calculate that. Uh, we can do, say, a 1 divided by 15 in here. Okay. And so now, hopefully, what's going to happen is it should go start off at 1 and then decrement by enough to get us to grey. Okay, so you see on that last frame there, it's actually at the same value as the, as the background. So it's disappearing here, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the first way that we can do this. We create a new variable, okay? We calculate using the, the frame presentation, the iteration, by how much we want to change the intensity of that stimulus. And then we populate our fill color list with that new color variable. And because we're changing both the red, oh sorry, the red, the green, and the blue channels, okay, it's going to be white through to gray. We're not changing just the red or just the green or just the blue, so it's not going to change the color itself. It's just changing um, red, uh, sorry, the white to gray. That's the first way to do it, okay? There's many ways to do it. I'm, agreeing, I'm giving you two. All right, so we'll turn this option off now. And what we'll do is we'll look at the second option now. So it's the same, inside the same um, number of trials loop. Okay, so it's still going to go through 10 times. But here what we're doing is we're just directly calculating and passing into that list our new increment, or sorry, our new intensity values. So again, we're going to change over 15 frames. And what we're saying is we're saying our initial value, which is going to be 1, so we could actually call this, you know, initial color because remember we've created that up here so initial color here is one <coughs> excuse me and I'm just going to hard code this as one so one minus I times 0 0.1 and remember that was our decrement value that we used before remember up here that was what we put up here so you see instead of creating our a new variable and then passing that variable into the list what we're doing is we're just basically doing that maths inside each value of that list 
directly. So we're saying, okay, our stim fill color is now going to be 1 minus the iterator times the decrement value for the red, 1 minus iterator times the decrement for green and the same for the blue. So we're basically, we don't need to do that additional step of creating that variable. Now what we can do here is we can actually change this now. So that will be uh, 1 divided by 15. Because remember, that's what we, we had up here because we want to fade to or dim the stimulus to the background color over those 15 frames. Okay, we'll do the same thing here. 1 divided by 15. 1 divided by 15. And we have to do the same thing for all the other ones. So that'll be 1 divided by 15. 1 divided by 15. Now you can parameterize this all you want by creating variables up the front and changing all the values and all that sort of stuff. So instead of hard coding it here, you can set all the variables up the top and you can then do all your maths inside this um, for loop here. Not a problem at all. The other thing that you can do is you can actually get a handle on the numbers of frames. Okay, so again, we've hard coded here. If in your experiment you wanted to make it modular or if you want to use different frame, uh, different screens and some of them are 60 hertz, some of them are 75 hertz, then you can modularize it all yourself. You don't need to hard code this. So we'll save that and now we'll run this and hopefully if we've pleased the programming gods, then we've, we should get our nice um, dimming stimulus. So there we go again. So it starts off light and then it goes, it dims to uh, the background color. Okay, now it is going really slow. The reason why it's going slow is because if you have a look here, we've got this core dot weight sitting there. I'm slowing it down so you can see what's happening on every single stimulus presentation. If we comment that out, you'll see this is really quite quick. Okay, so that is two. Uh, that's two ways that you can create a dimming stimulus. Um, the first way, um, we created a variable called new color. We then calculated what value we wanted for that frame. And then we passed that um, new variable into the values of the list. Okay, so that's got two steps there. Okay, update value and create list. The other way that we did it is we directly did the calculations inside the list itself. And then we then pass that into the stim.draw. Okay, you, in this way, this second way here, you don't need to create that new variable. You just do it directly inside that the position, position of that list. Okay, I hope this um, helped, um, and I hope this is what you were chasing when you, were, uh, when you were asking about the dimming stimulus. If not, send us another message and um, we can take it from there, all right? All the best with your programming.